In this sketch, we're going to go over a typical menstrual cycle, which starts on the first day of bleeding and ends just before the beginning of the first day of the next period. A quote-unquote normal cycle lasts 21 to 35 days, and bleeding lasts 4 to 6 days. The reason it's important to remember this is that, as you may have already seen in our abnormal uterine bleeding sketch, any bleeding pattern that deviates from this is considered abnormal and could indicate an underlying pathology. The menstrual cycle is divided into two phases, the follicular phase and the luteal phase. These names indicate which structure is present in the ovary during each phase, the follicle or the corpus luteum. Variations in cycle length are due to variations in the length of the follicular phase. The luteal phase is a fairly constant 14-day window. During the follicular phase, FSH is released in response to pulsatile GnRH secretion, which stimulates follicles in the ovaries to grow. This makes sense as FSH stands for follicle stimulating hormone. One of these follicles becomes the dominant follicle, and this is the follicle that will go on to be ovulated. As the follicles develop, they release estradiol. Estradiol causes a positive feedback effect on the follicles themselves and also causes the uterine lining to proliferate and get thicker. This growth of the endometrial lining is in anticipation of implantation of a fertilized ovum. All this time, another gonadotropin, LH, has slowly been rising as well. At around day 11 to 13 of the cycle, in part due to rising estradiol levels, an LH surge occurs, which triggers the dominant follicle's release of its egg, aka the main event, ovulation. Once ovulation occurs, the remnants of the follicle transform into the corpus luteum, and we enter the luteal phase of the cycle. The corpus luteum secretes progesterone. The switch over from estrogen dominance to progesterone causes a drastic change in the endometrial lining, as it transforms proliferative endometrium into secretory endometrium. Secretory endometrium, in comparison to proliferative endometrium, has more glands, which are tightly coiled. These glands secrete a rich mixture of glycogens and glycoproteins that would help support a growing pregnancy should implantation occur. If fertilization and implantation do not occur, the corpus luteum degenerates because there's no placenta to produce HCG to support it, and levels of estrogen and progesterone decline. This decline in estrogen and progesterone causes the endometrial blood supply to diminish, which in turn causes a breakdown of the tissue and the sloughing off of the endometrium, which is the bleeding that happens during menses. This decline in ovarian hormones also removes the negative feedback effect they had on GnRH, so FSH and LH levels slowly start to rise again. And with the onset of bleeding and rising gonadotropins beginning to recruit a new set of follicles, we're back at day one of the cycle. <laughs>